A blessed good morning to everyone in the hearing of my voice. A blessed good morning indeed to the church family and a special good morning to the Woburn church family. Indeed, it's yet another privilege that God has afforded us this morning that we could stand here in his presence and give him the worship that he so truly deserves. And so this is the day that the Lord hath made and we will continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, and extension all in the hearing of my voice, let us bless his holy name. Amen. Father, this morning, we thank you for this wonderful privilege, Lord, that we, O oh God, can offer up the worship to you that you so richly deserve. Father, indeed, as we would have just celebrated all that you have done for us, all that you continue to do for us and will continue to the very end, yes, Lord. Lord, help us never to be ungrateful, mm -hmm. but to always be appreciative of all of your grace and your mercy and your love that you continue to extend towards us. Mm -hmm. Indeed, you are the one true, personal, and living God, yes. holy and righteous. Mm -hmm. And all other gods this morning, they are deader than dead. Mm -hmm. Father, help us, O oh God, to remember the cross, yes. Calvary, yes. and all that it represents, Lord. Yes, Lord. It is because of that, Lord, that we live today and not just physically but spiritually therefore we have life and have it more abundantly all because of you mm -hmm. father this morning you are the sovereign God yes. yesterday today and forever you are the same you change if not yes. there is no shadow of turning with you yes. great is your faithfulness Lord and morning by morning you mercies you bestow on us father this morning you are in the midst of everything nothing catches you by surprise I saw the world over Lord you know exactly what is happening and father you are over you are you have control over all that is happening because indeed you are God, what you don't allow, you surely hinders. And so Father, as we your people go from day to day, Lord, help us to continue to draw our strength from you. Help us to continue to be focused. Help us to continue, oh God, to witness on your behalf, no matter the circumstance or condition. And so, Father, this morning, as the world continues to trash around from, for solutions, Lord, to all its problems, help us to remember that we are the light to show it the way. Yeah. Help us to remember that we are the salt to give it season. Mm -hmm. Help us to remember, oh God, that we have a bounding duty to share your word, your love, your care, your compassion, mm -hmm. and your comfort with the world. Help us, oh God, to remind the world that it in itself and by itself can solve nothing, Lord. And may it turn its face upward to you this morning and look yes. up yes. and cry out, oh God, mm -hmm. for help. Yes. May the urgence of the Holy Spirit individually and collectively draw men and women unto you yes. this morning. Help them to remember that all will fail. All on this earth is temporary. It will fade and fade. It will fail and fade away, Lord. But you, you will remain forever. And it is indeed your wish that none should perish. That is why you sent your only begotten Son. Father, this morning as we continue, O oh God, to be faced with our challenges help us oh god to continue to call on you uh -huh. 
whether these challenges may be mental, emotional, physical, major or minor, you are the God who has the solution for all problems. Yeah. And you testified to this when you walked on this earth for three years. Mm -hmm. Indeed, you healed the blind, you raised the dead, you, feed the hung you fed the hungry, you clothed the naked, and you enriched the poor. And so, Father, this morning as we go on, help us to continue to trust you where we cannot trace you. Yes, this prayer I pray in your name and no other name but the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 This morning we have Sister Clesia Allen to lead us in song. Very pleasant. Good morning to everyone. It is a privilege to be able to come and to minister to you in song, and I pray that your hearts will be blessed today. In a world like today's, and with all that's going on in life, it seems as though there's no way to turn, but we're here today to tell you that there is only one way, and that's through Christ Jesus our Lord.
today that with God on our side that everything is all right and that we shall not be moved because as long as the Lord is beside us it is all right praise the Lord Now 
read Psalm, Psalms 46. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Praise the Lord. I earnestly believe even during this period of challenges God is saying to the world, be still and know that I am God. But I also believe he's saying to his church to also be still and know that he is God. Be reminded. Be still. And if there's need for you to repent, repent. Mm -hmm. Be still. And if you need to return, return. Yes. And when I say the church this morning, I do not mean a denomination. God don't see denominations. God did not die for denominations. He died for his church. And wherever you are this morning, oh, yeah. as long as you believe in God the Father, mm -hmm. God the Son, yes. God the Holy Spirit, three in one, oh, yeah. he comes in a package, you take all three or you take none, then you are a member of his church individually and collectively. Yes. Praise the Lord. And as I say, this is a familiar psalm. Mm -hmm. This psalm of thanksgiving, which opened 
with these comforting words, and comforting words they are, God is a refuge and strength, yes. a present help in the time of trouble. Oh, yes. there will not, therefore will we not fear, mm -hmm. though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Yes. Verse 1 and 2. And it ends with this certain command. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Comforting words and certain words indeed. And this psalm was spent after a great victory in recognition of God's mighty and timely deliverance from the terrible threat and total destruction by the Assyrians. King Sinasherib and his menacing murderous army which caused mayhem, destruction, and death wherever it went, and whomsoever it invaded. And ever since then, this sound is frequently quoted by Jews, Christians, and others alike as their reference when trouble arise and there is no present solution and courage seemingly is dwindling fast and such was the present situation back then when King Hezekiah the king of Judah and his people were facing the mighty Assyrians who were threatening to destroy them absolutely. Initially, Hezekiah tried to appease his foe by paying them enormous tributes, hoping against hope that they would spare them from destruction. Destruction they had meted out to other nations previously. Previously they had invaded Israel, the ten tribes that had broken away and gone off with Jer Jeroboam. They had invaded Syria. And they had also invaded some parts of Judah. And here there were Buoyed by all of their victories, they were now outside the gates of Jerusalem, the jewel crown of Judah, the city of God indeed, demanding that Hezekiah open the gates of Jerusalem, submit to them, or they would come in forcefully as they usually did everywhere they went. When the Assyrians were about to invade a nation, they would go with their mighty army, their battering rams, and they would just knock the fortress walls down and they would go in and they would do as they pleased with the inhabitants of their, those nations. And there were times when those nations would see them on the horizon coming. And they would open the gates that they would be able to come in. And although they would do that hoping that they would treat them maybe just a little kinder. They went in and they did as they please with man, woman, child, 
young, old, and all in between. Today, morbid pleasure and satisfaction. I saw here there were this day demanding I must say there was a little bit kinder to Hezekiah, demanding that he open the gates of Jerusalem and allow them to come in. However, Hezekiah, inspired by the inspirational messages of the prophet Isaiah, mustered enough courage to say to them, no way, no how will I be opening these gates of the city to allow you all entry. And so he said this to Rabbi Shek, the spokesperson who was sent, demanding such. On hearing this, King Sennacherib and his mighty army, they were furious because no one said no to the Assyrians. And might I add, the Assyrians represent and represented the world. And so they made the necessary preparation to take Jerusalem by storm. But God, who ultimately always had control, over every situation which he brings under his control according to his sovereign will all he did was release one of his angels from heaven in the still of the night which visited the foe the Assyrian army, while they still slept, and caused all 185,000 of them to be still forevermore. The world should never trifle with God. He is a loving God whose wish it is that none may perish. As a matter of fact, God sent his only begotten son for this reason. But if you trifle with God, he's also a terrible God. And as Lord Byron, the poet, aptly put it in one of his verses in a poem relating the Assyrian story, he said, for the angel of death, his wings on the blast, and breathe in the face of the foe as he pass, and the eyes of the sleepers wax deadly and chill, and their hearts but once heave and forever grew still. Amen. Meaning, every one of them perish in their sleep. Mm. With all their preparations, when the morning sun rose, they were still forevermore. They, as I said, represented the world. And God says, Be still and know that I am God. There are certain boundaries you must not cross. And if you do, I will be exalted in the earth. That was God's plan then. It is his plan now. And it will be forevermore. He will never ever allow the enemy to win. No matter what guys he comes in, he will never win. Take heart. 
And today, the world is faced with yet another crisis. And as usual, it is thrashing around for a solution. And I believe God is saying, be still and know. Be still and let me. Be still, I am God. In the days of no, he told no to preach this. I am God. Come to me and you will be safe. I am that strong tower. I am the strong tower. They scoff, they scorn, and we all know what happened as well. God's words have a record of everything. They perish. And you would have thought the world would have learned a lesson. Seemingly, it did not. For not much time had passed when Nimrod decided he was going to build a tower up to heaven. He wanted God, I believe. He wanted to know God, but on his own terms. Amen. And knowing God, or getting to God, he wanted to make a name for himself. But God says, I will be exalted in the earth. And so when God had consultation with his cabinet, he said, these people really mean business, but we cannot allow this. And so he had to confuse them, their languages. They were building the tower, the tower of Babel, but he caused them to babble. And babel in languages that none of them could understand each other. I tell you, the enemy will never win. God will always be exalted in every situation, in every circumstance. Let me remind you that in the beginning, any in Eternity past, John says to us in chapter 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. Yeah. All things that were made by him, all things that were made were made by him, yeah. and without him was nothing made. That was made nothing. Therefore, we are reminded that the earth and its fullness thereof all belongs to God. He has given us to occupy and to enjoy. But we must not want to overrule. To overrule him or rule him. He is God who reigns supreme. But the world, as it always has, is still trying to rule and overrule God. And it will never happen. It says, it continues, in him was life, and the light was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. It is recorded in his word as evidence for us. He sent his only son to this world, who told the unbelievers, ye that have seen me, have seen the Father, in actual fact he was saying, 
I am the visible God representing the invisible God, and yet they refuse to believe. John 1, 1, 5. But I'm reminding you today, as Jesus did, that this is his Father's world. And we should be grateful that he has condescended to share it with us. And so, the life that I spoke about previously in John 1 represents the free gift of salvation and deliverance mm -hmm. yes. through his son Jesus Christ which is still available to everyone that have not accepted it yet so that they can be saved from peril. It is not his wish that any should perish. And we who are walking with him today, we are ever grateful that we answered the call, the urging of the Holy Spirit and accepted the invitation so that today even though in the physical we will perish in the eternal as long as we live true and faithful we will be okay praise the Lord Amen. and today for you outside of his ambit who have never accepted the invitation. Who have accepted the invitation and have turned back for whatever reason. It is still his will that none should perish. And so, from time to time, he will allow circumstances, not out of hatred, but of love, to nudge mankind towards him. To nourish mankind that when he done look around, look down, and look behind, that he will eventually look up. From whence all of God's help cometh. Praise the Lord. Amen. The light represents Jesus' revelation of God which calls and holds mankind to accountability. Mm -hmm. yeah. Psalms 100 verse 3 says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. And sometimes we do behave like we make ourselves. But God from time to time has to remind, have to remind us that it is he who hath made us. Yes. And that's why sometimes he says to us, be still. Mm -hmm. Be still and know. And so during this circumstance, maybe he's just asking the world to sit up and pay attention. As it looks on, helpless, hopeless, and hopeless in this particular situation. Working feverishly and frantically to find a cure. I believe that God is saying, I can help you. Call on me. Whatever evil this was meant for, I will turn it into good. Call on me. You see, sometimes the God that loves us and died for this world, he has to chastise it. And hope that it will learn 
learn the lessons made to be learned. And he's reminding the world today to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Acknowledge me, accept me, pleasure allegiance to me, and you will see your burdens will become lighter. Does it mean all challenges will disappear? No. It means that God will fight on your behalf. But you got to acknowledge him for who he is. Accept him for who he is. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one, who is all-knowing, who is all-powerful, and who is ever-present. And he's no one convenient. He's not to be called when you feel like. Exalted when you feel like. And then discarded when you feel like. No. He's God. And he should be treated like the God he is. Praise the Lord. And so... If you seek him first, everything else will fall into place. It will fall into place and it will also stay in place. If it is the other way around, however, expect what is happening now. We have the example today that all of the material gains, economic gains, whatever form of materialism it manifests itself in, is literally worldwide disappearing in the twinkling of an eye. In some ways, this episode is likened to the great depiction of our works. Things that took years to accumulate and build that the world have bragged about economies, scales, you name it, they claim it. It is literally disappearing before their very eyes and they are helpless to do anything about it. I know the God is saying, I am learning you all the lesson that I am God. And whatever you have accumulated, you have at my behest. Exalt me instead of yourselves. He's speaking to the world, I have no doubt. But I also believe in my heart of hearts that he's speaking to his church as well. And he said to his church, be still and know that I am God, the God who died so that you could be born, live and triumph. And as I said before, I'm not speaking to any particular denomination. I'm speaking to God's church. Amen. And I'll repeat this. I have no doubt he's saying, Be still and know that I am God. I die so you could be born, live and thrive. If I be in your head, 
and you being my body. I have given you examples enough of my exaltation in the earth. With my birth, ministry on earth, crucifixion, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and the sending back of the Holy Spirit who is the comforter, who is now present in the earth with the task of drawing all men unto me. However, in spite of all this, you, my church, that is called by my name, you have fallen away in great measure from the infant church which was born on the day of Pentecost with its purity, passion, perseverance, with its practices of holiness and righteousness. In all aspects of your life, Indeed, back then, holiness was your watchword and song. But alas, ever since then, and all down through the church's age, something has gone awry. And I'm calling you back as well. Be still and reflect on your condition. Be still and if you need to repent, repent. Be still and if you need to return to your moorings, return while there's yet time. Therefore, I believe God is saying to us, Those everlasting principles which I have laid down in both the Old Testament and New Leviticus 19 2 says, Be holy because I am holy. Peter in 1 Peter 1 16 also reminded and reminds the church of the same thing. Be holy. Because I, the Lord thy God, I am holy. Remember, I am your bridegroom. The bridegroom, and if I am the bridegroom, therefore you are my bride. You are my bride in waiting. And one day, I am coming back to claim you as my own. As my own without spot or wrinkle. And so therefore as you reflect, if there be any revelation that there are some spots, that there are some wrinkles, As you reflect, I want you to run back to the fountain which flows forever and be cleansed. Because I am coming back for a pure, holy, righteous church. I asked my Apostle John before he 
left this earth to write to the seven churches back then scattered throughout Asia Minor which represented the church from its birth to this present age. And I asked John to ask them to reflect and for who had ears to hear to let them hear and obey. And so in Revelations chapter 2 and 3, John was obedient and to each individual church, he said what the Lord laid on his heart. To Ephesus, and she represented the apostolic church. The church where the apostles in all of their fervor and passion in that age had established. And he said to John, yes, reminder of all the good she was doing and was still doing, that she had done and was still doing. But he had something against her. She had lost her first love. Whether she recognized it or not, she had lost her first love, which represented relationship, that intimacy with her God. She was busy, yes. She was upholding rules and regulations, oh yes. She was caring and sharing and all that, but she had lost the most critical ingredient, her first love her intimacy with her God. He's asking us today to reflect on this very thing. In all the programs, in all the different events, in all that we are doing, have we too lost our first love? that intimacy that will bind us together forever with him. Reflect. To the church at Smyrna, mm -hmm. it has suffered tremendous persecution for the sake of its Lord. And so he asked John to encourage her to continue pressing on. Praise the Lord. Pergamos. She found herself at the end of her age seeking and accepting political favors from the political class. And my church history tells me that at her age, the persecution of the church had abated for a while. Constant time, the Roman emperor was now welcome and he was now reigning. And so he reached out to the church, to the bishop and the priests and the deacons, etc., who had fought long and hard for right and had the evidence to prove it. Just like their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they had the scars. Some had an eye missing. Some had a hand missing. Some had a leg missing. As their trophies of faith, as their trophies of allegiance to the God they serve. And 
And Constantine, he was not the cruel persecutor. And that's why God church has to be ever vigilant. He invited them and he allowed them to come to his palace. And they were now able to walk fearlessly amongst the palace guards. He allowed them to sup at his table. He allowed them to recline on his couches. But there was a price to be paid. The church eventually found that whatever its agenda was at any particular time, and it clashed with the emperor's agenda, the church was the one who was made to adjust her agenda. And so the Lord in John chapter 17 did not warn his disciples to be in the world, but not of the world, just for so. He knew, he knew this day would come. And that way he have also warned us to be separated from the world. It does not mean that we must not witness to the world, that we must not care for the world, that we must not share with the world, but we must not take on the world and its worldliness. We are a separated people. We are a peculiar people. Oh, yes. We are the people of a royal priesthood and the world needs to see a difference. Ketai Yatira, this was the church which took on idolatry and flaunted it in the name of God. Sardis, she brought about reformation for a while, the passion, the vigor, and the perseverance was revived. And then she went from a movement to a monument. And soon all she had left was a reputation. What she used to stand for. No doubt how she used to dress and how she used to behave and how she used to do this and that. All she had was a reputation of the things she stood for. But they were not being practiced anymore. Philadelphia was told the door that her God opens, no man will be able to shut. And the door he shut, no man will be able to open. And that still holds true today. And my research tells me in this present, present age of the church, Laodicea represents this present age. And Laodicea is the church that did whatsoever please her. And today, I believe God is not pleased with his church either. She has some good things about her, oh yes. But he has some odds against her. And he's calling her back to her moorings. Today, the church, as we look around, it has material prosperity. Lovely buildings, you name it, the church have it. 
but she has also taken on some things. Worldly pride. We are living in an age that had it not been for God who knows the heart, you would scarcely be able to tell the world and the church apart. It might sound harsh, but it is true. The church over the years has taken on worldly pride. She has great outward success. Yes, that is true. But she has also allowed herself to compromise. Which the Apostle John summed up in total as lukewarmness. He wondered that she was neither hot nor cold. Therefore, she was not effective. He reminded her that God would prefer her to be either hot or cold. If she is hot, he can work with her. If she is cold, he can work with her also because he can revive her. But if she is lukewarm, she's neither fish nor fowl. She's in no man's land. And she's in danger of perishing. Therefore, God, no doubt, at this juncture in time, is calling his church back to her mornings. He is still the head, but the body is disintegrating. And he's calling her back to complete wholeness. He's urging her to go back and replant all the ancient landmarks that he planted for his chosen people, the Israelites, so many years ago. They are still profitable today. Remember I said er earlier, the principles that God has laid down has not changed and will never change. And he laid them down from Genesis. Mm -hmm. And he laid them down to last from Genesis to Revelation and beyond. Oh, yeah. And he's calling his church back to there. Reminding his church here, there, and everywhere that he is still the bread of life. He is able to feed her and he will continue to provide. Amen. She does not have to look to the world. That he is still the light of the world and she must continue to reflect him to the world. And if perchance her lights are burning low or they have become dim, she must clean her light molds that she can once again shine brightly for him. Yeah. The world needs her. The world needs her light glaring brilliantly that it can see as it grows its way through this darkness. Oh, yeah. He's reminding his church today as he reminded the Israelites mm -hmm. that before Abraham was born, he was and will always be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nothing, mm -hmm. no one mm -hmm. can change that. He's God from eternity past and from everlasting to everlasting. He will outlast everything and every 
everyone. Praise the Lord. He is reminding his church that he is still the good shepherd who will continue to protect his sheep. And if one go missing, he will go to the end of the earth and look for it and bring it back into the sheepfold before it is too late. He is reminding his church that all the earlings that will come and say that they love the sheep as soon as trouble arrives, they will run helter skelter for shelter and leave the sheep to be destroyed. Mm. He is reminding his church as we just celebrated that he is the resurrection and the life, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. He is reminding his church that he is still the true vine. Stay attached. And if you reflect and you recognize that there are some tears somewhere, mend them fast. Amen. Yes. Mend them fast by repenting yes. and making sure you are attached, reattached to the vine yes. who has all the nutrients mm -hmm. to prolong your life. Right. Not just in this present age, but in eternity. Yes. And lastly, he's reminding the church that he is the Alpha and the Amiga. Oh, yes, yes. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. He is reminding the world and his church to be, to know the world, to know and the church to remember that he will be exalted oh, yeah. among the heathen. Mm -hmm. He will be exalted in the earth. Yeah. He is reminding his church and the world that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Oh, yeah. He is reminding his church that if his people who are called by his name will humble them themselves and call upon him and turn from their wicked ways, he will remember them and heal their lands of this present situation and all that is to come. He is reminding his church. He is reminding this world but I believe he will put greater onus on his church because they're no other way. Therefore, they should do better. Oh, yes. And speaking to the Israelites once, he said that sin is sin. But why he would put a heavier chastisement on the Israelites, they were the ones that he gave his precepts and his laws to. And they were to set the example that all the other nations around them would see and know that he was God. Yeah. And he is expecting no less of his church. But his church today have found itself where it not, ought not to be. It is too similar to the world and is trying to justify its behavior. Everything now is relative. Truth and lie reside side by side. And rather than the church stand for the truth, she find herself in the middle of the truth and the lie in no man's land. And God is saying, no, no. You are to speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, no matter what. Yes, you will become unpopular. Yes, you will be shunned, scarred, persecuted. But what? They did it to me, and I am the head of the church. And I was able to overcome. 
Therefore, you will be able to conquer and overcome any obstacles in my name. Praise the Lord. And so as I close, the spirit that we are going through, I encourage us to reflect individually and collectively. And if we need to repent, to repent. If we need to return, to return. Mm -hmm. And when it is all over, and we assemble back as a church body, in a church building, because we are the church. The churches are closed right now. The buildings, we are the church. But when we come back as his body, I pray we will be a better people for all that we have experienced. And for all the lessons that he were trying to teach us, oh, yeah. I pray that we would have yeah. understood them, mm -hmm. accepted them, applied them to our lives, and be ready. Be ready. To give him all the praise and all the exaltation that he deserves, yes. it deserves. May God bless you. Amen. May God bless you richly. Hallelujah. May God bless you richly. You, May God bless all of us richly. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, this morning, I thank you, Lord, For not only laying this message on my heart, but for emboldening me through the power of the Holy Spirit to share it. It is a message, Lord, that we are living in a day that people, including your church, would rather you tell them what they want to hear instead of what your word says. But Father, you will always send your timely reminders to remind us of whose we are and what you expect of us, Lord. And so Father, this morning you are asking all of us individually and collectively to reflect and see where we are falling short. And come to you and repent in earnest so that once again, Lord, our words will be salty. Our light will shine brightly, Lord, in our homes, in our workplaces, in the wider society, and in your church. So that the service and the worship that we offer to you, Lord, will be a sweet smelling savor to your nostrils, Lord. That we will never hear the words that we are wretched, naked, poor, and worst of all, we don't even recognize it. And you cast us away from your presence. Lord, be merciful to us, Lord. Be merciful to us. In this period, Lord, we could have all drawn our last breath and gone from time into eternity, whether we were prepared, whether we were getting prepared, or whether we were trying, oh God, to repair damage that was done, or whether we were not prepared at all. But you have given us another chance. Lord, help us not to take it for granted. Because the next time, you might come like a thief in the night. You came when the Assyrians were asleep, and they never woke. And they went out of this world to perish. That is not what you want for us. You have promised us eternal life with you. May we keep pressing on. And at the end of it all, may we get to enjoy it. 
This prayer I pray in your name. And no other name but the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Yet again. His message have gone forth. We know he has said in his word. It shall not return void. Therefore. Wherever heirs may listen to it. I pray that it would do all that it will say to do. As we would go through yet another week. A week of uncertainty because the situation is still fluid worldwide. Be encouraged that we don't have to be uncertain, however, because we serve a resolute God Amen. whose promises are true. Mm -hmm. And no matter how high the mountain or how low the valley, he will see us through. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to keep you until we meet again. God bless.